now we're at the last stage. A purchase has been made and consumers evaluate the purchase. And what matters here is whether or not the consumer is satisfied and also whether they're likely to repurchase or tell anybody about their purchase. So let's look at this post-purchase stage. So what does consumer satisfaction mean? Well, on one hand you might say a consumer is going to evaluate the product based on the actual performance of the product. If, it's, if the actual performance is good, they'll be satisfied. If the actual performance is bad, they won't. However, that's not really the way it works. Consumers don't really evaluate what actually happens. What's much more important, I think I've made this point a few times previously, is the perceived performance. Even if the actual performance is not exactly right, if a consumer perceives it to be good, they're happy. If they perceive it to be bad, even if the actual performance is, is quite good, they're unhappy. So what matters more is the perceived performance, not the actual performance. But even that is not enough to understand satisfaction. The evaluation of the perceived performance is subject to some expected value for that perceived performance. So consumers are satisfied if the perceived performance of the product that they just purchased and then subsequently used or consumed is better than their expectation. That's high satisfaction. If it's worse than their expectation, they're not satisfied. And if it equals their expectation, they're neutral. And neutral doesn't generally uh, get people to think about it much. If the product just meets what they expect it to happen, that's that. They don't think about it much. So what's really interesting from a satisfaction point of view is if the product exceeds expectations or below expectations. That's when consumers are more apt to act actively. If it meets expectations and it's a frequently purchased product, they'll purchase it again. There's no problem. Um, but if it's higher than expectations or lower than expectations, they are more, more likely to have an active reaction. So what are the reactions? If the satisfaction is positive, if the product exceeds expectations, there's two things they're likely to do. One, they're much more likely to repurchase. If this was a really good experience, people are likely to repurchase and you're likely to have a loyal consumer. That's ideal. Secondly, if, if, the, if it's positive satisfaction, if the product exceeded expectations, they're more likely to tell other people about it and to say positive things. So that's all really good. The thing a marketer wants to do is to manage expectations. The expectation has to be high enough to get people to want to purchase in the first place. So you can get positive satisfaction by lowering expectations, but the problem with them is people won't buy in the first place if they have very low expectations for the product. So you have to set expectations so that they're reasonable, they encourage purchase, and then if you can come in higher than expectation, you're gonna generate very positive satisfaction and positive word of mouth. On the other hand, if consumers have a certain expectation and the product experience comes below the expectation and the perceived product experience comes below the expectation, that's obviously not good. They're likely to switch to a competitor. They're less likely to repurchase. They're more likely to spread negative word of mouth. And we do know that negative word of mouth is about nine times more likely to be spread than positive word of mouth. So a complaint is much worse. They may register a complaint. In some cases, if they're really dissatisfied, they may file a lawsuit. So that is obviously something a marketer wants to stay away from, negative satisfaction. There is an interesting little uh, caveat to this problem. If a consumer is unsatisfied and they tell you, and you respond immediately with a, a, a proper response, or maybe you give them their money back or you do something to make them ultimately satisfied, you can actually generate even higher satisfaction. So if you respond very, very quickly to a customer complaint in a way that satisfies or exceeds expectations, you can undo a negative satisfaction incident. But now in word of mouth, one of the things nowadays with viral marketing and things, how people respond to their post-purchase usage of a product is very interesting. We know consumer reviews are very effective. We know that people 
that other customers read consumer reviews. They care what their friends say. Facebook and Twitter and those kinds of things make it very easy to see what other people think about your product. So this person-to-person -person word of mouth is extremely important for a marketer to monitor and to think about. Um, we have, you know, some of the some of the things that are now happening with Pinterest and Facebook and the conversations, Tumblr and all of those, Instagram and those kinds of things. If you can encourage consumers to spread the good word about your product, we know that this is very, very influential at encouraging other people to shop, and it also makes you more loyal to the product. You become an advocate for the product. So this is a really good news. Of course, the bad news about it is if the word of mouth is negative, then that's much less likely to result in repurchasing and much less likely to get new customers to buy your product. So more than ever, marketers must be concerned with customer satisfaction. And the key point that I'm making here, which is really important, is not only is purchase not that single incident. I told you lots of things happen before a customer purchases. But it's, it's not the last step. What's more important, perhaps, than the purchase itself is how people evaluate the purchase and what they do with that information. So you really must, as a marketer, deliver to customer expectations so that you generate positive satisfaction and positive word of mouth. One of the things you want to think about is, because in this world of viral marketing, word of mouth and, and passing on information of your product is, is really influential and gets other people to buy, there have been a lot of studies done on what are the messages that catch on and get shared. My colleague at Wharton, Jonah Berger, has written a very the nice book, it's a bestseller, called Contagious, that talks about what kinds of information is more likely to get shared versus other information that's less likely to get shared. And he's identified six trigger points that, or six points that identify the kind of material that's more likely to be shared. And if this is true about the, uh, the customer's reactions to your brand, then it's more likely that they'll spread messages about your brand. He calls these six points steps, S-T-E-P-P-S. -P -P -S. And what he finds is that information that has social currency, that makes you look good, is more likely to be shared. So if you can share something about a cool product or a cool restaurant, you're more likely to tell other people about it because it makes you look cool that you consume that cool product. So increasing a person's social currency with the product experience makes something more likely to be shared. The other thing, and this is just incidentally, people share when they remember. So if you can remind people about a particular product ex experience, they're more likely to tell somebody. So if somehow there's a reminder that says, you know, got a haircut today, you see that you see that sign as you're talking to a friend, it might remind you of a very favorable time when you got a haircut. Um, and that's called a trigger reminder, to remind people to share positive information. We also know people are much more likely to share information if it's emotional, if you're really happy, or as I said, negative emotion also affects uh, whether people share. So emotional information is much more likely to be shared. Um, public information, something that's contagious in and of itself, if it's seen around a lot and it's very public, it's more likely to be shared. Um, if something has practical value, I can help you out, I get social currency by helping you out. That also is information I'm more likely to share. And finally, people are more likely to share something where they can tell a good story about it. If there are stories, people are more likely to share. In Whole Foods Market, where we are now, they have a lot of stories around, uh, around their products. And they, what happens is if you understand the story behind the product, where the product came from, where the fish was caught, what was the name of the captain of the boat of the fish, or you understand where the background is of these different products, these stories make it more likely to share that information. So these six um, uh, uh, steps that uh, Jonah Berger has identified are called steps. Social currency, triggers, emotion, make it public, practical value, and tell stories. And if you can get people to identify these kinds of things with your brand, they're more likely to spread the word of mouth. And if they have a positive experience with your brand, that word of mouth will be positive. So in conclusion, what I've been trying to talk about here is to think about 
your marketing from the consumer or the shopper point of view. You have to be in the shopper's life. Your brand has to be where the shopper is in order to get the shopper to eventually purchase you. You need to understand the shopping experience from start to finish. Understand that shoppers make impulse decisions. They work on their own perceptions. They work on emotions. It's not necessarily what's actually true, it's what they perceive. Um, and they make decisions on what they see and what they miss. And again, it's really all about the personal relevance to that shopper. How does this purchase influence my life, satisfy my needs, meet my expectations? And I hope you've realized that again, in this world, this purchase process or shopping experience is multi-stage. You can make mistakes or fall out of consideration at many different levels. And it's also multi-channel. It's online, offline, mass media, um, targeted media. It's a very complicated world where marketers have lots of opportunities to get their message out to the consumer.